This is a matter of deen. This ilm is a matter of deen. You be careful who you take your deen from. The fire that we utilize, one seventieth of the fire of Jahannam. So ponder upon that, Ya Ikhwan. The next time you sin, the next time you transgress, the next time you lie, the next time you deceive, the, le the next time you wrong someone, or the next time you disobey Allah, or the next time you delay the prayer, or the next time you miss the prayer, or the next time you steal, or the next time you violate your contracts, or the next time that you are unjust with regard to your wives and your children. Think about this, Ya Ikhwan. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ba'd. So there is a great difference, Ya Ikhwan, between the fire of hell and the fire of this world. Alongside this, it is eternal. It is forever. It will never come to an end. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned with regard to it, its protectors are those who look over the hellfire. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, over it, meaning over which, over the hellfire, that they are appointed angels. They are stern, ya ikhwan, stern. They are stern having no mercy. No mercy for those who are inside the hellfire. And they are shidadun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. They are severe and they are strong in their bodies. Not having mercy for the people of the hellfire. Because they are stern, because Allah created them with that severity. And Allah created them with that sternness. So with regard to this, ya ikhwan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has likewise informed us, alayha tis'ata ashr, that the malaika in their number, that over the hellfire, that they are 19 in number, ya ikhwan, over the hellfire. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he mentions that the kuffar, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that upon the hellfire, that they are angels stern and severe, stern and severe, ya ikhwan, and strong, over the hellfire, that the, that the disbelievers, the kuffar in the hellfire and the mushrikeen and the transgressors, that they will never be able to overcome those angels. So when the mushrikeen, they heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that over the hellfire that they are 19, what did the mushrikeen think? Look at the, the corruption in their thought and the corruption in their thinking. The mushrikeen, the idol worshippers, they thought 19? Just 19 to look over the hellfire? By Allah, we shall overcome them. We shall overcome them and we shall kill those 19 angels and release ourselves from the hellfire. And they did not know, as Ibn Rajab said, that the kuffar, when they thought that they were only 19, that they could kill them. They did not know that the whole of mankind in its entirety would not be able to even resist a single one of those 19. Whole of mankind would not be able to overcome one of those 19 angels, never mind all 19. The Prophet Sallallahu said, with regard to this hellfire, Ya Ikhwan, that Allah has prepared for the wrongdoers and for the kuffar, and likewise for those Muslims who disobey Allah, that Allah will cast a group of the Muslims into the hellfire, no doubt. And it will be a purification for them. But not a single one of the believers should desire, not for a single moment, not for the blinking of an eye, not for a moment, that he should even come close to the hellfire and never mind enter into it, Ya Ikhwan. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the hellfire will seek from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when people are cast into it. The hellfire will seek from Allah more. Throw more into me. So the hellfire will speak. And this is our aqeedah. And we believe that the hellfire will speak. So Allah will cast more into it, more into the hellfire. Then the hellfire will say more. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will place His foot upon the hellfire and one part of the hellfire will draw closer to another part of the hellfire. And then the hellfire will say, enough, by your glory and by your honor, enough. And this is when the hellfire, ya ikhwan, will become filled. The Prophet ﷺ, on an occasion when he was amongst his companions, that the companions, they heard a noise, a loud noise, they heard it. So, they, so the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, do you know what that noise is? And they said, Allah and His Messenger know best. 
Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed his companions that that is a rock that was thrown into the hellfire 70 years ago. And it will not reach the bottom, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And it will not reach the bottom in one of the narrations as Shaykh al-Albani is authenticating in Sahih al-Jami. A rock, ya ikhwan, cast and they could hear it as it fell through the hellfire. Yet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed his companions, yet it will not reach the bottom. In a narration reported by Muslim, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, that the hellfire will be brought, and it will be held by 70,000 ropes. 70,000 ropes will hold the hellfire. And each of those ropes that will hold the hellfire, that there will be 70,000 angels holding each one of those ropes. This is the hellfire, ya ikhwan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to protect ourselves and to protect our families from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned with regard to the hellfire that it has saba al buab, that it has seven doors. Ibn Kathir mentions from many of the salaf that these doors, that one of the doors is upon another door, that there's a door. Below it another door, below it another door. Seven gates, one on top of the other. And an individual will be cast into the hellfire in accordance to his evil. And the Salaf and one of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Zaid bin Aslam, he mentioned that the hellfire, that it increases in its descent in severity. And as for paradise, then it increases in reward as it ascends. So the lower the hellfire, then the more severe the punishment, ya ikhwan. So let us take the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyu alladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. And in conclusion, ya ikhwan, ponder over this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And make a contrast between the paradise that Allah has prepared for his believing righteous servants. And between the hellfire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has prepared for the wrongdoers, and for the kuffar, and for the munafiqoon, and for the mushrikoon. Where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa stated, that I saw paradise, he sallallahu alayhi wa said, I saw paradise, and reached out to take a bunch of one of its fruits. If I had managed to do so, then you would have eaten from it up until the end of time, meaning up until the day of resurrection, you would have eaten from it up until the end of the world. If he had grabbed, if he had caught one of those bunches of fruit, then the people will be eating from that bunch up until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and I saw the hellfire, and I have never seen anything more terrifying. I have never ever seen anything more terrifying than the fire of hell, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And then he mentioned that the majority of its inhabitants are women. So it is a protection, ya ikhwan, that we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we protect ourselves with the obedience to Allah. So flee to Allah, ya ikhwan, as Shaykh al-Fawzan mentions. Flee to Allah by doing righteous deeds. And save yourselves from the hellfire. Do not allow this time that Allah has given you to go away and to go to waste. Whether you are young or whether you are old. For those who are young and you think I have many years in front of me to do good deeds. Then don't think like that because you don't know what Allah has written for you. You don't know which path Allah has written for you. You don't know how long you're going to be upon the earth. So don't say to yourselves that I am young. So let me wait up until I am 60. Or I am young and give me a few years to misbehave and to cause mischief. And if you are old, ya ikhwan, then fear. Because your death is close. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for this ummah, ya ikhwan, that they will not exceed a certain number of years, ya ikhwan. Old age when it creeps upon you then you come closer to death. So whether you are young or whether you are old, do not become lackadaisical with regard to the affair of the hellfire and with regard to your sins. And do not belittle the sins that you commit. And then you turn around and then you say that I have much time. You don't know how much time you have, ya ikhwan. So be upon righteousness. Be upon piety. Traverse the path of the sunnah. Traverse the path of sincerity and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.